sharing, which is our main topic of tonight. I will be sharing uh, on the anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and also anti-aging topic. So I believe this topic is something that we often heard people talk about uh, anti-aging, people talk about anti-oxidant, uh, anti-inflammatory, but what are those and are they actually related to each other? So tonight, I think it's a basic introduction uh, to, to dive into topic for these three terms. And I, be, I hope after this session, right, everyone will have a better understanding and we know how to explain to people when our friends or our prospect ask us anything about these uh, three areas. At least we have a, a, a foundation knowledge to share with them. Okay. And it's also very important for us to, it's also very important for us to know uh, about this knowledge because it's uh, related to the product that we are actually re representing. Okay. So <clears throat> without further delay, I'll be going into the topic of this. So the first one, I'll be targeting on what is the inflammation, okay? So inflammation basically is referring to our body. It's a natural process of our body in fighting against things that actually harm it. For example, whenever there's an infection, there's injuries, or there's a toxin attempting to uh, intrude our body, okay? Our body will have the attempt to actually heal itself. So this is actually a mechanism, okay? So when something damage our cells, right? Our body will release a chemical that trigger a response from our immune system, okay? So this, <clears throat> this uh, chemical response and also the, the uh, immune system response, right? It will actually cause an uh, inflammation at that particular area. So on the right-hand side, you, can, you will be able to see <clears throat> uh, from this picture, if I just briefly explain to you, uh, we all will have a better understanding on uh, what is the meaning of inflammation. So you can see from here, uh, whenever there's uh, intruders, okay, for example, here you can see there's some uh, uh, bacteria, virus, or uh, foreign bodies that actually enter into our body, then actually our immune system will react to it. So the moment it react to it, right, it will actually cause more fluids uh, flow, uh, flowing from our blood vessel to the tissue area. So you can see at the bottom here, this is actually the blood vessel, right? So why, why the body will trigger this kind of mechanism? The purpose is actually our body know that all our soldier and our immune is flowing in our blood vessel, okay? It's not in the body tissue. So it actually create this mechanism to let the fluid flow from our blood vessel to the tissue area. So whenever this this uh, response happen, right? Automatically, uh, our soldier, for example, our white blood cell, all that, you will actually flow out to the tissue area to, to, to counter this uh, attack, okay? So whenever this happen, right? You will also create this thing that we see. For example, uh, we will have swelling, we, we will have an uneven skin at that particular area, okay? An easy example is like, for example, you... Uh, you being stung by the mosquitoes, that particular area normally will be itchy and then it will swell, right? So there is a, a very minor form of inflammation that is uh, very easy for us to understand, okay? So <clears throat> I hope up to now, we all have a basic understanding on the inflammation and then I'll proceed to let us know at the bigger picture, why inflammation is so important to us because basically, uh, a lot of the chronic disease that we know of today, right? And also those that high rank in our health risk and those that actually uh, main concern for the whole world, like for example, cardiovascular disease, diabetic. Diabetic is not listed here, but actually it's actually at the chronic as well. And it's also uh, because of the inflammation. So from here, you can see uh, inflammation itself, it can cause two kinds of uh, uh, difficulties in our system. For example, on the left-hand side, acute. When we say acute, it's something that uh, short life. That means it, it will attack us on a short-term basis. So for example, we will have frostbite, chemical irritants, we have burn, allergic reaction, infection, all that. Okay, it will not prolong for too long. So it's an uh, acute attack in our uh, body or our immune system. So we will also, on the right-hand side, you can see there's a chronic. Okay, so this chronic attack normally is what we uh, call it as a disease. So you will see this will normally follow us for a long time, for years, if let's say we don't know how to tackle it from the root cause, 
Okay, so there's a lot of time when we actually have this chronic disease, like for example, cardiovascular disease. Okay, we have this uh, depression or even we have the diabetic that I mentioned just now. We normally will resolve to medication. Okay, I have nothing against about med med medication, but what I'm trying to share tonight to, to let everyone have a good knowledge on, I mean, at least an introductory knowledge on what is actually caught behind this causing all this uh, chronic disease. If we know that the, the root cause is actually inflammation, okay, of course it could be caused by other factors as well, for example, genetic and also uh, our lifestyle habit and so on. But all this actually it trigger the inflammation mechanism. And in, in the end, it is the inflammation mechanism that actually make all these disease prolong. Okay, so if let's say we want to strike back the balance and uh, adjust back our body so that we can solve it from the root, right? Then I think it's important for us to continue and listen and, and, and get to know more about inflammation. Okay, so that, that is why it leads to the next topic that I'm going to tell you guys is on the anti-inflammatory. So <clears throat> now only really we go into the anti part because I think it's important for us to know the original term, which is inflammation. If we don't know anything about inflammation, then we straight away talk about anti-inflammatory, then we might not have the uh, big picture and we might not know why we want to uh, take anti-inflammatory. So now if let's say we know already and we know that we have to constantly and on a daily basis to strike that balance, then you will know how important it is because now if let's say you already have that big, big, big picture, you think about people around you, like maybe you have a, aging parents or you may be friends which is not age but same age as us but they already have a hypertension they already have the cardiovascular disease what is causing that on top of their daily lifestyle all that actually why those lifestyle will cause this disease is because one of the reasons is the inflammation okay so when inflammation uh, attack different part of our body right it will cause a lot of different health risks. For example, here I give three examples and later on I'll give another one example which is very, uh, very reason to us and very important to us nowadays. Okay, the first one, for example, if inflammation is happening at our heart, right, you will actually cause shortness of breath or actually a fluid build up. So if I say um, we, we have this constantly and at the long term, it will really uh, risk our health because heart is the most one of the among the most important organ that helps to regulate our blood circulation all that you will also indirectly the one that actually distribute all the nutrition all over our body okay so if let's say it doesn't perform at its optimal right you can imagine a lot of things will happen okay so inflammation at our heart is the least thing that we wish to happen to our heart so how to prevent that Okay. Second, if let's say inflammation happen at the small tubes that actually take the air to our lungs, okay, it may actually cause the shortness of breath. So this is uh, commonly happen for a pneumonia patient, or if let's say uh, those that always um, have a smoking habit and so on, they might also have the inflammation easily happen at, at their lungs. Okay. So <clears throat> whenever they have this kind of inflammation attack their lungs, they will have this uh, shortness of breath. Okay, and number three, inflammation of our kidney. Okay, so inflammation of kidney is also a, a, a very serious because it will actually cause the, the irregular blood pressure in our body. So when it is irregular, it will actually uh, cause a lot of other issues. For example, diabetic, our high blood pressure, and even our sugar will, level will also fluctuate. So all these uh, irregular <clears throat> circulation in our body right it will actually in the long run it will cause kidney failure okay so how do we actually uh, avoid and also if let's say it already happened how do we actually reduce and actually reverse the the inflammation that happened in our body if we are not aware then it's very dangerous because as what we all know we will not experience pain okay today don't uh, we we cannot make an assumption that Oh, I don't feel pain anywhere in inside my body, so I'm doing fine. I will. I don't have this inflammation problem. Okay, that is not true because, uh, as we all know, um, many of our organs do not have the pain sensitive nerve. Okay, 
particularly like our liver. So you will notice that a lot of people have the liver inflammation causing fatty liver or that uh, subsequently. And then the more chronic one, they will have scar scarring at their liver. Okay, because most of our internal organ, they, have, uh, they don't have any pain sensitive nerve or very little pain sensitive nerve. So whenever you feel the pain, that means it's already come to a very serious and chronic stage. So <clears throat> I would rather assume that day to day we are encountering so many things and we are not actually exercising our lifestyle uh, optimally. Okay, we have to be honest and to be frank to ourselves. Uh. If let's say we know that oh we are not practicing a very holistic lifestyle, then I think it's fair for us to assume that everyone definitely will have this inflammation happening in our body. But if it's happening and it's accumulating, how do we actually reverse and try to reduce it? Okay, so number four, just now I said, I want to further explain on the uh, current, what we all concern, which is COVID-19. So COVID-19 is also an inflammation attack to our lungs. So if let's say we are contracted, right? You, we also always see in the news, people who contracted, they have uh, difficulties in the breathing. But what is the process that actually starting to lead to that is also because of inflammatory. Okay, so <clears throat> when this virus actually enter into our, our breathing system and our airway, right, it released the inflammatory signal to our body. Okay, as usual, any foreign body or any unknown things that attack into our body, it's common that the mechanism is to release the inflammatory signal. Okay, so when this signal being <clears throat> released out, like I mentioned just now in the earlier slide, it will create, you will actually uh, encourage the the fluids inside our blood vessel to be released into the tissue. So in this case, when it's in our lung, immune cell will be directed to the injury area and exit the capillary, okay? Because in our lung area, it's not blood vessel, like it's a smaller uh, blood vessel, which we call capillary. So capillary actually surrounding all our alveolus. So is all these fluids will actually go into our alveolus and the, the, the role of alveolus, if you remember last time we studied the biology is actually to actually for the, the oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide exchange happen at the, all this small, small bubble, as you can see on the right hand side, the picture. Okay. So as if let's say the fluids keep going into all these alveolus, right, you actually flood the alveolus and it will not be able to perform the, the, the job it's supposed to do already. That means the exchange of the gas, oxygen, and also carbon dioxide. Okay, so if let's say that is interrupted and in when it uh, become bigger and bigger and more and more being contracted, then slowly our alveolar system will actually collapse. So the, that is the reason why we see, eh, how come a lot of the page, COVID patient when they go for the x-ray, their, their lung is 50% damaged, 70% damaged, uh, some even 90% damaged when I, uh, some of the friends, parents who contracted. So it's um, very important for us to know why inflammatory, because as far as what we know, right, uh, from the history until now, okay, all these virus attack, uh, bacteria, uh, bacteria intrudes, all this, it will create inflammation uh, reaction from the body, okay? So if let's say it's, it's a good reaction because it's our immune system reaction, but if let's say this inflammation is actually attacking our organ and some of the important internal organs, it becomes not good, okay? So I think it's important for us to know the anti-inflammatory habits and also diet, okay? We will not wait until the day we get diabetic or we being diagnosed with a cardiovascular disease, then only we start practicing all this. Because to me, it's important for the day-to-day -day life to practice all this, okay? We just need to do a simple change. I mean, uh, here there are some very uh, simple uh, recommendations. For example, if I say we are a smoker, we are a drinker, try to reduce it or best if we can quit it. Okay, second, we need to maintain a healthy weight. Okay, uh, as per research, if let's say our body weight increase, you will definitely our body fat will also increase. And all this burden and also the extra uh, composition in our body, right, you will actually create inflammation uh, effect as well. For example, if I say uh, our internal organ like liver being surrounded by too much of the internal visceral fat, you will actually create inflammation uh, process then it will actually cause 
the liver to harden and then slowly scarring. And bear in mind again, all this happening without us noticing because it's inside our body. Even if you go x-ray, you will not know. You have to do a, a different test in order to able to check it. Okay, so <clears throat> next is actually learn how to manage our stress and also our depression. Okay, everyone nowadays, if we are working or if we are conducting our own business, we will encounter stress. So learn how to manage it because stress will eventually cause inflammation as well. And then fourth is to avoid artificial preservative colors and flavor. Okay, so if I say we know any product which actually don't have any of the artificial preservative colors and flavor, that will be best uh, selection for us. But of course, in day to day, it's very hard for us to like avoid 100%, right? But if let's say today we know about this, we can take a conscious uh, action to try to avoid and try to reduce as much as possible. Okay, and number five, we learn how to control our sugary food and also fried food. Uh, I know this is uh, quite tough uh, because Normally, sugary food and also fried food is, uh, are the best, uh, best taste. Uh, okay, we also enjoy sugary and fried food because, uh, they they are we sometimes we will crave for it, but we we shouldn't make it a daily habit that every day we take fried chicken, every day we we take candy or every day we take donut. Okay, even though that is our favorite food, we have to make a conscious decision to control that. Okay. Because you have to imagine if let's say the inflammation that happened in your body when it comes to a certain stage, which is uh, very chronic, right? It's very hard for us to do the reversal already because the moment you found out, you might have thought, you might have realized it has been accumulated for the past 20 years that you keep eating the donut, for example. Okay, so lastly, the diet. Okay, so we also try to incorporate more of the uh, good fatty acid food with a good fatty acid, quality fatty acid, okay? We are not talking about saturated fat, all that. So we are talking about the good fat, fatty acid, for example, olive oil, okay? Eat more uh, leafy green veggie, okay? Vegetable, which is green color, okay? And it's uh, uh, soft leaf, okay? And nuts, for example, uh, nuts, we have to be very careful because not all nuts give us the quality fat, fatty acid. For example, uh, those that, Give, do give us quality fatty acid, uh, almonds, walnuts, okay? So uh, some other nuts, which like more common one, like peanuts, normally it, it contains uh, higher cholesterol, all that. So you, it, it's not a good source of uh, quality fatty acid, so to say. So <clears throat> if we know, and we often go to the hypermarket, we'll know that normally food with the quality fatty acid, uh, the price will be high, okay? If you know, uh, for example, like avocado, uh, all the nuts mentioned here, the price is definitely higher compared to the normal nuts and the normal fruits. Okay, and then lastly, fatty fish. For example, uh, we can deep sea fish, for example, uh, salmon and cod, they have a very good uh, quantity of uh, fatty, uh, good fatty acid. So good fatty acid actually help to reduce and control the inflammation process that happened in our body. So if let's say, Ask ourselves if today do we intake all this food in our in our meals? If not, then like I said, we have to fairly assume that the inflammation is accumulating more and more. Okay. But if let's say today we do intake, will tomorrow we intake the same again? If not, then we really need a solution to close the gap of this uh, anti-inflammatory agent in our body. Okay. So I will be going into the second topic, which is uh, on, on antioxidants. So be like inflammatory as well, I will also introduce the original term itself, oxidation. So in order to understand on antioxidant better, we will first need to understand what is oxidation. So when we talk about oxidation, the most common example that I can give is on the right hand side, you can see these fruits. Okay, I believe everyone have a, a, a prepare cutting fruits at home, or even sometimes you buy it from the outside from the vendor. Okay, when you reach home, right, the fruits probably you will show some brownish or even sometimes you buy honeydew or what. When you reach home, you will notice that at the edge there, it's already yellowish or brownish. So that process itself is actually the oxidation process. Okay, it is very obvious for apple. Okay, because apple normally it, uh, is very dependent on the outer layer to protect the, the, the nutrition inside. So if you cut into a half and you wait for a while, you will turn into the one on the left hand side. Okay, but if even if we don't cut the 
we don't peel, we don't cut into half, right? With the with the skin uh, there, right? Even along, <clears throat> if you put that long enough, it will also go into the oxidation. Okay, so what we learn from here is actually we cannot uh, avoid the oxidation from happening. It's happening to all living organisms on the on this planet. Okay, it's a uh, it's a uh, something that we cannot stop. Okay, but we can definitely slow down, or we can uh, we can uh, control it better. Okay, just like if you cut it to half, definitely the exposure is bigger. The oxidation will happen even faster. But if I say you have a protector layer like the lower part, then it will slower. It take longer to 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 oxidize. And if you do protection, then probably different story. We are going go into that in the later slide. But first. Oxidation is basically, we know on the right-hand side from the visual, okay? But what actually is happening that causing this to happen is basically, uh, it, this one is a, a bit of chemistry and also uh, biology also, okay? So it's actually the loss of electrons and the increase of oxidation state of any atom and also ion of certain atom in the molecule, okay? So basically in short, right, we, we, what, I, what we understand from here is that the this is happening, oxidation is has been happening because the atom or the molecule lost the balance of the electron. How can that happen? Same like what happened to the inflammation when there's a for foreign body that enter into the our tissue that caused the inflammation reaction. But this one is when there's a foreign body uh, go into that particular tissue or that particular cell that caused the, the electron to become imbalanced, then the oxidation will happen. So you ask, what is that foreign body? Okay, that foreign body is commonly known when we discuss about oxidation topic. The that that particular thing is called free radical. Okay, that is the most common cause of oxidation in our day to day uh, activities. Okay, we are exposed to it, uh, no matter how. Okay, I'm quite sure everyone of us already exposed to it. Even now, like you listening, you are uh, dialing in into this online meeting, you are already exposed to it because you are looking at your screen. Your screen has the blue light and blue light it will also create a uh, free radical. Okay. So free radical actually cause oxidation. And in, if I say in, to visualize it on the right hand side, you can see um, it's actually the free radical is the one that actually caused the imbalance of the electron. So you will see that free radical is always in balance. They have an a empty seat or they have an additional ion with them, okay? Because they go and uh, grab ion, the ion from other balanced atom and molecule. So they will always be the one who in balance, they will have the extra or they will have the, the missing one, okay? So whenever they have a missing one, antioxidant agent is the one that actually will borrow the missing electron to them and stabilize it so that it will not continue to go and destroy other cell and tissue in our body. So I think this is a very simple way to explain and for us to understand uh, how free radical actually in the long run cause such a big damage to our body. And yeah, oxidation happen uh, every second, every uh, minutes, every hour, okay? So on the bottom side, you can also see in a more visualized in terms of our cell, a healthy cell, when it's being attacked by the free radical, when imagine like your, your fortress, right? Keep being attacked by your enemy and then the fortress will slowly collapse. Why it will collapse? Because all these electrons, okay? When you can imagine your fortress uh, built with the bricks. So the free radical is like the one who keeps stealing the bricks one piece by one piece. And then eventually the entire fortress will collapse. So this is actually what happening to our membrane cell. Whenever the outer layer is keep being attacked by the free radical, it will go out of shape. The moment it go out of shape, we all learn that inside is a fluid. So it will definitely destroy when the fluid uh, is being um, uh, uh, damaged. Okay, and then inside we have the nucleus and also our DNA, all that inside. Okay, so uh, this is from the molecular level but this is not happening just for one cell, okay? Don't, don't think that actually, oh, today one cell uh, being attacked by free radical. No, actually now like inside our body is a lot of war happening with this free radical. But how to ensure that we always win that war 
Uh, that is the important thing that we need to know on the second part, which is on the antioxidant. But before I go into that, I will further explain that uh, to, to reiterate what I have explained on the right-hand side diagram. Free radical is a saboteur to the balance of ion and also electron. So I, I hope by now everyone should have a, some simple idea what is free radical. Okay, and also it, like I mentioned, whenever you actually damage our molecular uh, cell, right, it will eventually damage to our DNA also. So if it happened at the big capacity, it will actually alter the DNA in our body and it will not, when our DNA is being interrupted in a very large scale, right, you actually affect our optimal health because when you duplicate the, the, the damaged DNA to the new cell, then you will actually reproduce a bad or not optimal cell. Okay, And in the long run, you will actually cause a lot of health issue to that particular person. So it can come in many forms in our daily life. When we talk about the, the free radicals, right? it can come in many forms. Just now I have just mentioned one blue light, which is the common one, but of course we have many more in the subsequent slide I will share. But before that, we will need to know. If we know that it's like surrounding us, everywhere, okay? Even now indoor, we have a lot of chemicals emit by our wall paint, okay? By our furniture, by our cabinet, everything, okay? Those are the things that will actually become a free radical. You somehow will enter into our body through our breathing system, through our injury, through our op uh, wound opening and so on. What we can do is actually just three things. First, prevent at our best. How to prevent, okay? When it's so, it's like everywhere, of course, we can do some preventive measure. Okay, and second, we can also reduce the exposure. But again, we, we want to ask how to reduce the exposure. Not going out, uh, outdoor is not a, a great solution because indoor itself, we have so many free radical. And thirdly, we can actually increase the antioxidant agent in our body. That means we increase the army and also we continuously put back in the bricks that being taken out from the fortress. So we can actually maintain and also help our body to strike the balance all this time, okay? When it's not, it's always at the imbalanced state, right? Whenever there's a virus intrude, then you are the person to, who gets sick very easily, okay? So <clears throat> just now I mentioned free radical is everywhere, okay? Around us. So if let's say we know it's around us, for example, we, we have uh, the, here is just a few as few common example, okay? It's not all, but I think it's good enough to cover some of the thing that we're familiar with. For example, on the left-hand side, you see the UV light. UV light can actually cause the free radical into our body also. Okay, so just now we mentioned uh, three, three ways. We can prevent it. Can we prevent UV light? Okay, I think we can, uh, it's very hard for us to prevent uh, because the sun is so bright. It, even at the night time, we have to switch on our light or that you have UV eventually. Okay, it's a UVB and or UVA, okay? So, if we are exposed to UV, we can actually, second option is to reduce, right? That's not I mentioned. Can we reduce it? Yes. Okay, we can actually apply sunblock. If you have a good sunblock product, okay, for example, those from artistry, okay, we can actually minimize it. And lastly, we can actually increase the antioxidant in our body, okay? So I think the third option is always applicable to all sorts of free radical that we have seen in this uh, diagram, okay? But if let's say we talk about uh, option one to prevent, option two to reduce, is uh, very limited that we can we can do. Okay, for example, smoking. Okay, we can also reduce. We can reduce through a good air filtration system at home and even in our car. Just now in the promotion that I mentioned, we have the atmosphere drive. Okay, at home we can offer atmosphere sky or atmosphere mini. So that is the reduction and the extra layer of protection that we can do. And then in our body, inside our system, are we boosting up our antioxidant, okay? And then I won't go through uh, other things. I think basically smoking and air pollution is the same. And then we have a lot of ionizing and also radiation happening around us when we watch our plasma TV, enjoying our Netflix. All this uh, radiation and also ionizing is happening, okay? And then of course, uh, in terms of microbes, like virus, all that intrude, you also a form of free radical because whenever our immune system kick in, you actually create a lot of damage. When a lot of thing is being damaged, there'll be a lot of electron and also ion imbalance happening. Okay, so do we have a cleaner that actually eventually come to 
clean up all this mess. So the cleaner is basically the antioxidant. But before I go into antioxidant, I think it's important for us to understand also the concept of OREC. Okay. So when we talk about antioxidant, we will also get to expose on the OREC topic. OREC stands for oxygen radical absorbance capacity. Because in, uh, in short or in a more layman term, basically it's, it's, it's a test to, um, to evaluate the OREC level in particular food by placing a sample of that food in a test tube and then with a certain molecule that generate free radical activity and certain other molecules that are vulnerable to this oxidation process. So they try to create an environment just like our body. Okay, if let's say we have a, this healthy cell and then there's a substance that actually keep creating the free radical, okay, how well it will actually protect this sample from that damage. So this is how actually they calculate the ORAC unit. Okay, and the things about this method is that it measures the antioxidant activity. Okay, it actually me measures the activity uh, rather than the, the specific nutrient. So this is important to keep in mind. So when we know about this ORAC, right, it's nothing to do with like, okay, today you take the vitamin 500 mg, 1000 mg. Okay, will it affect the, the ORAC activity? Not necessarily so. This is what it's trying to imply here. So the ORAC activity is much more depending on the, the substance of the particular um, the particular. Uh, item or particular food that we are referring to. So in the subsequent slide, you will understand better when I give you some example of our product that actually have this ORAC rating. And um, you will be surprised those that have a, a more rich blend of uh, plants ingredient inside, the ORAC, uh, the ORAC rating is very high, okay? So uh, if we have this knowledge, then we will be a wiser consumer because we will not be easily uh, told by others that tell you, oh, the vitamin dosage is higher, so the ORAC is higher, so that is not true, okay? We need to share the correct knowledge. So from here also, I just briefly go through the ORAC uh, uh, research done. So here it also mentioned that the higher ORAC value is better at quenching the free radical, we know about that. So it also mentioned that fruits and vegetables particularly are high in the ORAC. Out of all the food substance that the scientists and also researchers test uh, all this while, they found out that actually fruits and vegetables have the highest one. Okay, so the uh, researcher also suggest that ORAC intake ranging from 1,000 to 2,000 units per day will actually promote health. And not only that, it can help to decrease the risk of chronic disease. So chronic disease, including those that I mentioned just now, like cardiovascular, diabetic, um, we have other, uh, other disease which is uh, so common and chronic, okay? And researchers also suggest that intake between 3,000 to 5,000 units per day, okay? Which is effective in preventing all other issues, for example, uh, cancer disease and all that, okay? So before, before we... Uh, go into the last one, anti-aging. As usual, I will also tell you what is aging, but I think aging, when we talk about aging, it's more common already. I mean, most of us know what is aging and all of us cannot run away from it. So on the right-hand side, you can see from a kid slowly become an uh, adult and then you will uh, age become an elderly. And the definition I take from the WHO is actually, it, it says that, is at the biological level, aging result from the impact of accumulation of wide variety of molecular and also cellular damage over time. Okay, this lead to a gradual decrease in our physical as well as mental capacity. And along with that, right, you actually create the growing risk of disease and also the ultimate, uh, and ultimately uh, to death, lah, because we cannot escape death, right? Eventually everyone will have to uh, face it. But this is the process of aging and the definition giving, uh, given by WHO, which I think is uh, quite good. I mean, at, at least it explains bio biologically what is happening. But if I say we refer to the Oxford des definition, right, it's too simple. It's the process of growing old. Okay, so this is like uh, two surface. But if I say I would rather take the definition from WHO for us to dive further what we know about aging. Because I think it's important to note that it mentions about the cellular and also uh, molecular damage over time. 
And just now when we discuss about inflammatory and also uh, oxidation, both of them is actually causing the damage to our cell and also our molecule in the body. Okay, so if you know how to tackle inflammation and antioxidant and oxidation, does it mean that we can actually slow down and in a way try to control our aging and make sure our body is always at the optimal state? So this is something that we're going to uh, discuss later. So cell injury and damage, it happens every day and uh, it happens in a very mass capacity. Okay, so it's uh, something that we, it happens throughout our lifetime. Uh, Okay, we cannot avoid it. However, like I said, we are able to slow down the process. We can even control it at the optimal pace. When we say optimal pace, this is the actual pace that you're supposed to age. Okay, we are not only uh, able to slow down, but we will keep it at the optimal pace. If we're not keeping it at the optimal pace, that means it's a reverse way. We are actually neglecting it. We don't care about it. It will actually become faster. So when it becomes faster, right, uh, you, you will notice that sometimes, okay, maybe after 10 years or after this entire pandemic thing over, right, you have another friends gathering, then you will notice that like, how come some of the friends like age so much already? Is it too stressed with the work or is it because of the uh, some issue or what? Okay, so that happens, right? That happens to us. But do we actually ask ourselves further why that will happen? And no, they probably, a lot of us, we will actually put the blame on genetic, put the blame of like, uh, some people will actually have more white hair. One, uh. Some people will actually have more wrinkles. One, uh. But is that true? To me, if I say we are not doing our best to actually control the balance that we're supposed to have just now, I think that is not entirely true because a lot of things that actually we can control. So <clears throat> we cannot hide from it, but we can actually ensure this cellular and is always at the optimal state, like I mentioned. And to be prepared ourselves for any um, unfortunate incident. For example, if I say you are being uh, attacked by an acute or chronic disease today, is your body at the optimal state to actually be prepared for that war? If I say you are not, then you just take it for granted that now you are being not being uh, contracted with anything, then you just uh, chill on it, then I think we are actually putting ourselves in a great risk, okay? So when we talk about aging, I have created this formula, okay? So this one I didn't take from anywhere, but based on our understanding of today's sharing, right, I think we can fairly say that uh, it's not entirely determined by inflammation and oxidation. That is the reason why I put there's uh, additional other factors. And these other factors, including genetic, which we cannot run for it. I don't, I don't deny that some of, us during that gathering, we saw our, our friend have uh, aged more than us. Partly is due to genetic DNA, okay? But there's also a large part which is due to lifestyle, okay? Whether we have control the inflammation and oxidation from happening, okay? So uh, every human being, we age differently, okay? But do, are we, do we have a say to actually control uh, most of it? So if you know this equation, right? Aging is basically equal to inflammation happening, oxidation happening every day, accumulation basis. If you remember the definition of WHO, is the accumulation basis. So um, you will not be able to like reverse it, become negative. Okay, you can only slow down or control it at the optimal space. If we didn't control or we don't care at all, then the accumulation will actually multiply to uh, uh, multiply even faster and faster and faster because all the previous backlog will actually create more snowball effect for the future aging, okay? So if I say we do something about it, why is there something that we can do? Before we go into that, I just want to give you this example that I tell you just now, okay? Uh, just now I said, try to imagine your friend gathering, but this is true story, okay? This is one of our example, one of our Mway diamond in Thailand, right? So just to, to, to show the page so that we all know that it's really uh, Mway Diamond, okay? Because got other <laughs> Thai sales company actually use uh, this picture for their product testimonial, which is uh, not true. You have to know the, the, the true story, la, okay? It's from Mway, okay? So if let's say these twins, right? See, when they are young, two look exactly the same. But how come when they come to the certain age, right? Is so much different. The one on the left, which is a diamond in the Mway business, you can see 
how he actually take care of himself, having a healthy lifestyle, having a healthy intake, healthy, healthy nutrition can actually make such a big difference. Okay, so if you are telling me um, genetic, okay, fine. Probably it's due to genetic, but can it be such a big difference? So I'm sure it's definitely something that they have do differently in their lifestyle that actually cause this gap. So today, don't don't um, don't give up. I mean, today if I say we feel that oh, our we like uh, too stressed with work, we don't have time to take care of ourselves. So just don't care. Okay, I I think we can actually uh, take a very simple step to just make a, a very simple uh, change in our life to have this different. But of course it will be accumulation as well. Because as you can see, when they are baby, you don't see any difference. But after like so many years, accumulation, it becomes such a big difference. So today, are we waiting for that accumulation to come to a serious stage? Then only we, we try to concern our health or we start it early to, to get all these uh, merits to our health. Okay, so if we collect our marriage start from now, then you will come to a certain point of age, probably when you are 50 years old, probably when you are 60 years old, when you compare to your peers, you'll know that, okay, you are living a very, you are treating yourself very well, okay? So again, back to this formula, and, and after the testimonial that I showed just now, I think we, we, we know that it does make a difference, okay? It does make a difference. And uh, uh, if, let's say, an athlete who actually train very well, they control their diet also very well, of course, the, the performance will be different. If an athlete train very well but have a very bad diet, of course, it will affect the performance as well. So we, we will try to uh, talk about this topic on a very scientific um, basis. So if we all agree and we know that this is a fact, we have to, and we have the control to actually make that change, right? What is the change that we can do? So first one, if I say we talk about the inflammation, right? There are, there are so many things that we can add into our diet to actually uh, have this more anti-inflammation uh, in our daily diet. For example, here you can see olive oil I mentioned just now. Okay, try to use a uh, more quality oil to, for our cooking, for our food preparation, all that. Okay, it helps. Okay, but on top of that, if let's say today we ask ourselves, is it every day also we, we makan avocado? Is it every day also we take salmon? If not, then how we actually close the gap or we also don't care? Okay, <laughs> if you don't care, then we will not be able to create that accumulation merit. If let's say today we want to create an accumulation merit and we want to go for a simple solution, my suggestion is actually just to intake the supplementation. Intake the supplementation to close the gap. And this supplementation, supplementation can just happen as your breakfast okay it's not something that i ask you to take extra but if let's say today instead of taking your current existing breakfast you are taking roti chanai you are taking nasi lemak or whatsoever try to change it to a healthy breakfast which incorporate uh, all this product okay if not all you can actually choose which actually give you a, a very good source of uh, fatty acid. So all that I listed here, right? For example, our summer omega is very good source of fatty acid, whereby it clearly states to you what is the what are the fish that being used, the deep sea ocean that we taken from the Norwegian Sea. So it's uh, 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 far from pollution and the distilling process is so good that actually it remains the quality of our fish oil. So this actually helps us to close the gap. And uh, we also have other uh, great products which actually help to reduce the inflammatory. For example, the turmeric that we have in our triple booster is actually uh, good for anti-inflammatory. And for our milk sister, it actually protect our liver health. Inside also got the turmeric content and it's also got the, uh, our asarada content, which also, also become a very good antioxidant as well. But I put it and in this category because the, 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 the role of anti-inflammatory is higher for this product. But you will notice that some of the product actually also contain the antioxidant effect. For example, our fish oil inside, there is a vitamin E and vitamin E actually play a role in antioxidant, okay? But I, I put the category based on the main role of this product, okay? Just to be clear, okay? So the second part, when we talk about oxidation, what are the things that we can do? Also through our normal diet, okay? Take in, intake more fruits, which is actually uh, red color, uh, deep color, like the blueberry, strawberry, all those is very high antioxidant, okay? 
orange probably, but the antioxidant is quite low. Okay, so if let's say we want to have a high antioxidant uh, intake of diet, okay, these are the 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 fruits that we can go for, and also there's some uh, green leaf, uh, vegetable. Okay, so all that actually give us a high antioxidant. If again same question we ask ourselves. Today, have we taken our fruit platter, our fruit portion? If not yet, how are you going to close the, 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 the gap? Now it's already 9.30. Okay? So if now already 9.30, uh, it's very hard for us to close the gap already. But if let's say today we incorporate this uh, supplementation in our breakfast, right? We have already done it very early of the day. I mean, the beginning of the day, we already closed the gap. Okay? So it can be done through a very high antioxidant product, for example, our uh, concentrated fruit and veggie, our uh, CoQ10, our Bio C+, and also the lecithin E, all this is uh, got the different different source of soluble and also uh, uh, water soluble and also fat soluble kind of uh, antioxidant. Okay, so just now we learned about ORAC. So this is here. Uh, here is where I'm going to introduce the ORAC unit for our product. For example, the concentrated fruit and veggie, the ORAC level is so high, 4,000 ORAC. Okay, just now, if you remember, researcher recommend 1,000 to 2,000 for, uh, for, to maintain a good health and also to decrease the risk of chronic disease. So let's say you are taking this uh, concentrated fruit and veggie, you already surpass that and even you go to the range of preventing uh, the cancer disease. Okay. So in terms of uh, others, for example, others we particularly talk about DNA. So is there any product that can actually prevent the DNA damage and it can also help to repair DNA? It is our double X. Okay, so double X is one of the, which is the first product of Nutrilite and also the longest history. And a long time it has been improvised on the formula all that. So until today, it is a very strong product uh, in our Nutrilite range. And uh, it's also the, 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 among the best seller. So you can see the ORAC level is not losing to our concentrated fruit and veggie. It's 3,500 ORAC. It's also very high. If let's say every day you are intaking this um, consistently two set of this double X every day, then you, you, have, you, have, you have done the justice to your body to maintain the inflammation, the oxidation uh, balance. Okay, if let's say today we are we, we are missing all this, okay. You if today you flashback what you have, makan, okay. None of all this quality product. We don't talk about supplementation yet. If let's say the 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 net the normal food, the normal diet, do we have all this? If not, then it's very hard for us to uh, create that merit in our aging process. And if we fail to create that aging process, definitely we will. Of course, you will not notice it in a day's time. In a week time, even months, you will not notice the difference. But in years, then you will slowly notice, hey, how come I'm the oldest one ah, when I have a friend gathering? So I think I'm not trying to create a fear or uh, by looking old is bad for, for me or what. But I think we ourselves, we want ourselves to be at the optimal health. That is the most important thing because the benefit of staying uh, optimal health and also staying young the benefit of it, right? We are the person who reap the most of the benefit other than the praise from people around us. That is actually secondary. The primary is actually we ourselves enjoy that kind of uh, benefit from it. That is the most important thing. And I think the praise and also compliment from others after so many years, right? That is the, the, the extra benefits that we get, okay? 